Okay, good morning everyone, or good evening, depending where you are, and welcome to week two of writing Wikipedia articles. Uh, this, this week we're going to uh, dive in and, and look at how people interact on Wikipedia a little more closely. Um, hopefully everyone has had the opportunity to create an account and join a team and maybe put something on their user page. Um, but uh, as, as I typically like to do in the class sessions, I'd love to start off with any questions if people had any difficulty with the homework uh, or if people uh, you know, had any, any confusions and encountered something interesting. I would like to take a few minutes at the beginning and cover anything like that. So, uh, so please speak up in the chat window uh, if you have something you'd like to share or something you'd like to ask. Uh, and I guess while you're thinking that over, I've got a, um, a nice little uh, announcement to make that made me very happy yesterday. Um, one of our students from the previous round of the class, uh, E. Jade, uh, she worked very hard on an article about an orchid uh, that I, I think I may have mentioned the last time. It's uh, it's Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica, and I'll pull it up on the screen in a moment. Um, but this was her final project for the class, and she didn't she she kind of came short of earning the badge during the class time on a, a small technicality, but she really stuck with it and um, submitted. <clears throat> submitted her project for the badge just yesterday, and so I thought uh, as we get started it might be nice to share that article. So let's see, I'm going to turn on my screen sharing. And just give you a quick look at it. So this article is actually the project really of two students. Um, one of them earned the, the badge previously and the other just submitted yesterday and, and got it. So this, was, this article was um, basically nothing when we started. Uh, I'm going to just click on the View History tab, which hopefully is starting to look familiar to you. And I'm going to go to the bottom and click on 500 so it shows 500 edits going back. Um, and I scrolled all the way down to the bottom and we can see that uh, May 2006 is the, the earliest edit. So it had been started quite a while ago, but um, even more recently when our, our students started on it, so I guess that would be in, in June, there still wasn't very much there. It still was just, uh, it was one sentence. It had this nice info box over on the right, which is fairly standard um, for articles in biology, but that's really about all that was in the article. So as you can see, they really went a long way towards creating a, a really uh, useful and effective article. And uh, I think the list of references that they used is probably the best way to, to see just how much research they did uh, to build it out to where it is now. So uh, I don't think Jade is with us today, but if you're out there listening to an archive or something like that, congratulations. Very well done. Uh, so let's see. Anyone have any questions or comments before we get started? Peter, I have a Kudos. statement here. Yes. Apparently a lot of people have been getting that same error message that you got when you went to log in today. Um, so we have some people who are trying to join us and haven't been able to log in. So I'm going to go post something in our various locations advising people to restart their machines. Did anyone else, did anyone else here get a maintenance error the first time they tried to log in today? So it's like three or four people, so. Chip, did you restart your machine and did that help? I'm just curious. Wow, thank you, Blackboard Collaborate. Okay, good to know. Just the browser goes enough? Okay, that's good. Sorry for the, the hassles, folks. Uh, as I think I mentioned last time, Blackboard Collaborate has been a sometimes a very effective tool for us and sometimes a pretty frustrating one. So <clears throat> looks like, I don't know, the, <laughs> maybe we have a little bit of a internet storm out there today. OK, thanks, Sarah. Um, so 
I think the <clears throat> the first thing I'd like to cover today is um, as because I know some people are really just making the first edits, uh, just getting started, and um, one of the one of the best things to do to get started is to create something to create a user page, so to create a, a page for yourself. Um, people often uh, make really elaborate user pages, and other times they just put in a sentence or two about themselves. But as you might imagine, in a collaborative project, it's really um, it's it's it helps the process a great deal if people um, if people share a little bit of information about themselves. So it's an easy thing to do. It's not something where anyone's really going to criticize you uh, unless you do something really uh, really off the wall. <laughs> so um, I'm going to just click on my user page for this demo account that I use, and I think this is a good length to aim for. Um, so all you <clears throat> all you need to do is put in a sentence or two sentences about who you are and what you do. Of course, this this isn't really a great example because this is a secondary account for me. Um, actually, let me. I think since we were just looking at uh, at Jade's article, let's just look at her user page, which I think is a good example. So I'm going to go back to the article and click View History. I know that she's been one of the most recent contributors, and I'll just click on her username. So here we have uh, an example of something that you'll see on many user pages, which is these user boxes. Um, often people will uh, will put up these boxes to indicate things that they're interested in, or things that they're working on, or skills or expertise that they have. Uh, but you can see before that she has a just a sentence about what she's interested in and uh, and the fact that she was enrolled in this course. If you see user boxes on someone else's page that you want to add to your own, like just about anything else on Wikipedia, the best way to figure out how to do that is to look at the source. So if you click on edit or edit source, you're going to see the codes that she put in. So this sentence should look familiar. That's just a very straightforward sentence with uh, with one link in it. Uh, but then everything that's below that, that's going to be the the code that puts in those user boxes. So uh, just to give you a, a, a basic idea of how this is put together, she made a table. Um, tables can be a little uh, a little tricky to make, but you can kind of see the structure for it here. Oh, I'm going to bring up my point size. I remember people were having trouble reading my screen before. So a table is defined by this bracket and then vertical bar at the beginning, and then the same thing at the end. Uh, I'm going to just give you sort of a, a, a really basic idea of how they work, and if you're interested, you can uh, I, I can point you to a page to uh, to learn more specifically how to how to build it. Um, then this combination, the vertical bar and the dash, uh, will create a new row, and then each vertical bar is a new column within that row. And so each one of these is one of those four user boxes that we saw on her page. I'm going to go down and and uh, and preview so that we can see what it looks like again. So it's basically a a table that creates this string of four across. So the first one is user copy edit. So that code creates this light blue box here. And um, the the double squiggly lines here mean that it's something called a a template, <clears throat> which basically means that it's pulling in a set of code from somewhere else on Wikipedia. So this temp template is called user copy edit, and that code creates the box. So just to to show you how that looks, uh, I, we talked briefly about namespaces last time. So these are uh, ways of dividing up Wikipedia content that are that are about building the encyclopedia. So things that are that are beyond the actual Corpus of the encyclopedia itself. So this is in the template namespace, which is indicated by template and then a colon and then the name. So I just copied this from her code below, user copy edit. Yeah, and I'm having some. There we go. And so here you see the actual that actual template page. So it's so this should look familiar. This is the box that showed up on her page. So basically putting that code in 
pulls it into her page. So if you wanted to be a member of the Guild of Copy Editors, uh, and we'll, we'll get into, oh, good morning, Jade. We were just looking at your account. Uh, I, I showed the class your article, which you just submitted for the Wikisu Burba badge. Uh, and uh, we got lots of applause for it. And, uh, and now I'm explaining to people uh, what a user page looks like. And I went to your page to show them. So excellent timing. <clears throat> Sorry you had trouble logging on. It seems like several people are today. Um, so if you wanted to put one of these user boxes on your page, all you would need to do is copy that part of it, uh, the, the template. You don't have to copy the, the, the table. The table is just something that Jade, Jade used to organize them on her page. But if you're only putting one or two, it really doesn't matter. And you would just copy that and put it on your own user page. So to create your own user page, you're going to, uh, here, I'm going to bring the point size down a little just so it looks a little bit more normal. So your user page will show up as a, if you haven't made one yet, it'll be a red link in the upper left of the screen. So in this case, it's Pete Forsyth demo. But when you're logged in, you're going to see your own name up there. And if you click on that, you're going to uh, see the edit screen. Uh, we don't see it here because it already exists, but I'm going to just put in an extra uh, character up there. So. Um, so this is going to, to bring you to, it's first going to tell you that the page doesn't exist. And then if you want to create it, you just want to look through here for the link that says start that page. And if you click that, then you have this edit box. And so here you can say, uh, my name is so-and-so. Maybe, uh, you know, if you, if you work for a university or if you're uh, attending school or if you're interested in uh, working on articles about plants, you, you can just you can say anything you want here about yourself, and then that's going to show up every time you make an edit. It's going to show up in the contributions screen for that article, um, and so if other people see your name in blue as opposed to red, they're going to know that you've taken the trouble to create a user page, and they might click and see what you've said about yourself. So it supports that ability for people to work together. Uh, Hardcore cancel. I see you're asking uh, how to how to get different templates. So um, I think the 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 best way to do it is um, is really just sort of one by one. Like if you find other users that are working. On content that you're interested in uh, and look at their user page, you'll probably find uh, you'll, you'll find user boxes like that and copy them as you find them. But they are, I'm going to just go back here to the Jade's page. Uh, and actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to the specific one we were looking at. A strange problem here. Sorry, folks. Got some kind of strange browser issue here. There we go. So when you're looking at any one template, um, at the at the bottom of the page, and this may, might not be clear that it is the bottom because we have uh, because there's so little on this page. But you'll generally see this categories box. This this is on a Wikipedia article on on really uh, any page on Wikipedia. You'll see that the that there are several categories listed. So if we click this one, Wiki Project User Templates, this is going to show us a list of some of the templates that are available to use, and these are all categorized. Um, so. Wiki Project Film, it looks like there are 30 different templates that are associated with Wiki Project Film. We're going to get into what a Wiki Project is a little later in this session. Um, but as you can see, they're, they're, they're based in topics, and some of them have lots and lots of user boxes. And then um, many down here 
are just individual ones that are not categorized uh, within a certain user project. But of course, you, when you look at them this way, you don't really get a preview of what the box looks like until you actually click into it. So let's click on user Anaheim Ducks. So um, this user is a member of the Anaheim Ducks task force of Wiki Project Ice Hockey. So um, not entirely surprising, but again, if if you were just looking at the name of it, you might not you might not know what that is. So you're you're welcome to kind of browse through this way, and you might find some that are interesting to put on your own page. Uh, but also, I think you should watch what each other are doing. So within your team uh, or within the class, um, you might want to click through the pages of of some of your classmates. Uh, and I'm going to go just back to. Well, okay, so I'm going to click on courses at the top. I think this is working for most people now. I know one or two people had difficulty with it. Um, and I think we found out what the problem was. So if anyone still is not seeing courses at the top of your screen, speak up and I'll, I'll go through that. But anyway, if I click courses and then I click writing Wikipedia articles, that's going to bring us to our um, list of students. So here we have everyone who's in the class. And you can see this, this mix of red and blue links. So the blue links are going to be people who have made a user page. So I'm just going to click on T. Dempsey. And so here you have a couple of boxes that indicate what language he speaks. Uh, and he's, he's given us, this is just what we're looking for. He's given us a couple sentences up at the top. And then he's also got this, I didn't mention this before, but this is another important use of, of user pages. A lot of times people will um, will park interesting information as they're learning about Wikipedia. So um, if, there's, if there's something you're working on, some people put a section like this current project and just put links to the articles that they're interested in working on. Um, sometimes people will uh, put in bits of code that they might want to use in the articles they're working on or links to help pages, things like that. So uh, all of this is fine. It's really up to you what you put on your user page. I think there was something I was just going to get. Oh, the, the courses link. So sorry, I think I know what this is. Um, so if you have the first thing to do, Acrolith, is to make sure that you successfully enrolled in the class. And that the way to do that is to look at this page that I just came to. Of course, it's a little, a little tricky to find if you don't yet have courses. So I'm going to just look. I'm assuming you use the same name. I'm just going to. OK, so it looks like you did successfully enroll. And so if you're not seeing courses at the top, you probably need to turn it on in your preferences. And uh, let's see. I, th so there's on our, on our course talk page, uh, someone has listed where it shows up in the preferences. I actually don't remember uh, off the top of my head. I don't remember which it's it's going to be in one of these tabs at the top, and I'm not going to I'm not going to take the time digging through it right now. But uh, if somebody finds it, post it in the chat window, and I'll I'll pull it back up. <laughs> no problem. So if you're if you're not seeing it, it's uh it's it's not a problem as far as the course goes, but it certainly is uh, it's a useful way to to get to a quick list of your students. Of course, we also have our team page. So I'm going to just go back to our main page here, wp colon wiki sue. And actually, as you may have seen, uh, teams came up in the autocomplete there. But I'm just going to scroll down and click on teams here. So this will, uh, will give you the, the full list of students who have signed up to join a team. If you haven't yet joined a team, you should do this. Uh, there are instructions on how in the homework from week one. Um, oh, OK, actually, I see it's under mis, uh, under miscellaneous in the preferences. So here, I'll just pull that up on the screen so everyone can see. This is, again, this is if you need to get the courses link at the top of your screen if you're not seeing that. So you go to your preferences, click on this and then show a link to your courses at the top of every page. 
Oops, I just unchecked it. Okay. Um, so back to, I'm going to go back to our Teams page. So we've had a number of people join Teams since last week. Um, and here people have also introduced themselves, which is excellent. And uh, I see that nearly everyone who's joined a team has created a user page. We've got a couple that haven't. Um, but this is, a, this is a great place for you to go and see what your fellow students are starting to develop uh, for their user pages. So you go to any one of these and click on their name. And you can get a feel for who's in the class. So I think that's probably enough enough time on. Well, okay. One more one more thing about teams. Uh, once you've joined a team, it's important to get in get in touch with your teammates. Um, in uh, for uh, for the most part, I think it's best to use our course discussion page. So if you click the talk tab at the top of any of our pages, that will take you to um, to our our discussion page. Uh, this is where we we had this uh, this issue about the the course link. So this is just a place to troubleshoot, share ideas, ask questions, um, and this is a good place to introduce yourself to your teammates. So um, you might take your your team name from the from the team's page. Uh, some some of our teams have chosen names for themselves. So we've got Team Revolution, uh, Team OER Focus, New Folks, uh, and some are just Team Two, Team Four. So you might make a section with your team name on the talk page, and. Uh, and say hi to your, your teammates and maybe how you want to be contacted. So also a good way to make direct contact early on is just to um, send them an email. If you are, let's just say that we're on team four, and let's say I want to send an email to, uh, to Brian Kelly. So we'll click on his account. And then once you're looking at someone's user page, um, you can scroll down and on the left hand side in the toolbox, you'll see email this user. This, this isn't there 100% of the time because every once in a while you'll find that someone has not entered their email address in their Wikipedia account. So if, they've, if they haven't put their email address in, there's no way to email them directly <clears throat> and the link won't show up here. But usually it does show up when you click that you get a, uh, a web form that lets you send them a message. So you can change the subject line if you want to, and then <clears throat> they'll get an email that, this, this also, of course, assumes that you've entered your own email address. So they'll get an email, and they'll see your email address, and they'll be able, able to email you back directly from their email program. So <clears throat> um, in general, the best way to, to communicate on Wikipedia is on talk pages so that other people who are interested in the subject might, uh, might see what you're talking about. So when you're talking with your team, you, you maybe want all of your teammates to see it. Uh, it's nice if, uh, if Sarah and I can see it so that we can jump in and add to your conversation, things like that. Um, and then when you're working on an article, it's best to work on that article's talk page um, if you have comments about what you want to do, because that way other people might come along that you never knew had an interest in that article and can see what you're talking about. So uh, email and other off-wiki forms of communication uh, we encourage as, a, as an initial way to get in touch as everyone's getting used to how to use the software, but we really encourage you to, um, to use the Wikipedia talk pages as much as possible as you get more comfortable with them. Okay, so I want to take a step back and, uh, and I want to talk for a moment about open educational resources, which uh, we've mentioned a bit but haven't gone into a whole lot of detail on yet. Um, 
many of you come to us from the Open Educational Resources community, uh, but for a lot of people in the class, it's a new concept. So I'm going to actually just go to the Open Educational Resources Wikipedia article. <clears throat> so OER is, uh, the, is <clears throat> the basic concept of OER is uh, to develop learning resources, and that's pretty broadly defined. So that could be anything from a textbook to a video uh, that would support a class to a video that just informally uh, tells someone how to do something that people might share on YouTube. So educational resources that are openly licensed. So they are um, they're shared in a way where you're explicitly saying uh, that it's okay for other people to reshare them, uh, to modify them, to add to them, to translate them into other languages, republish them, um, and that you don't insist on having, um, you know, you don't, you, that you don't, you don't need to be compensated for that. You don't need to be, you don't, you don't need to give permission every time. So uh, that that explicit upfront agreement makes it possible for there to be a very rich community of people um, actively building and remixing and republishing uh, educational resources. So this is a pretty exciting area and the area where uh, where Sarah and I uh, intersected in our work. And so uh, in this class we encourage you to work on articles relating to open educational resources. This is just one of many. Um, it's sort of the, I guess, the, the top article, but there are many different articles about specific initiatives within open educational resources or, or uh, other things relating to them. And I'm going to show you a page where we've collected a list of those articles. So this is a shortcut. Uh, <clears throat> so COM OER is short for Communicate OER, which is the name of our uh, the, the project that led to the School of Open class. And so this is a, a collection of pages about that project, and I'm going to go straight to the content tab. So this is Wikipedia content that relates to OER. And here we'll see a whole list of, of articles uh, that are of interest. So uh, open content is, uh, is of course, a related concept, but not even, it's, it's more general, it's not specifically just educational resources. Um, recently, uh, some of our students have worked on an article on open educational resources policy, so laws uh, and policies supporting uh, or relating to how open educational resources work in different countries and different school systems. Um, open educational practices is an article that a couple of our recent students have worked heavily on. Uh, open textbooks, open courseware is a is a specific is really the first big open educational resources project, but is a specific uh, project that's run out of MIT, and so that is a, it's a, a project that kind of has its own history. And uh, the article I wanted to go to next to uh, to kind of give you a, an idea of how collaboration works on Wikipedia is this article on Massive Open Online Course, or MOOC. You've probably heard the, the term MOOC before. Um, and if not, this is, uh, this is something that's been gaining popularity with, uh, with universities around the world, where the university will offer a course that's online, and similar to this one, is free to anyone to enroll. Uh, there might be a distinction where, <clears throat> where students who are formally enrolled in the university can earn credit, and other people don't earn credit, but maybe they just earn uh, a badge, or maybe there's not even a formal recognition, but they have an opportunity to participate in that learning experience, even though they're not enrolled at the university. <clears throat> so this has been a very hot topic in education. Uh, to give you an idea of that, let's, uh, let's look at, I don't think I've shown you this trick before. I'm going to click the View History tab, and then up near the top you'll see this page view statistics link. Uh, there are actually all of these external tools are, are kind of interesting and that might be something you want to poke through. But let's just click on page view statistics to get an idea of how many people have looked at this article recently. 
and sometimes it takes a little while to load up. So you get this chart. It tells us that almost 90,000 people have looked at the article in the last 30 days. And so this is a day-by-day -day representation. Every bar represents one day. Uh, we can look at it over a longer time period if we want to. But you get the idea. It's something that is uh, really gathering a whole lot of attention out there. And this is, this, this is really why uh, we wanted to start this project on open educational resources, is that Wikipedia is serving as, um, it's, it's the way that people are getting to know this field. And if the articles are not in very good shape, then people are not learning about it as well as they might. So, so let's go back to the article, the MOOC article. Let's take a really quick look through it. Um, so there's, there's a two-paragraph introduction, which uh, to me is a good sign. It's been a little while since I've looked at it in depth, but um, if I remember right, I think it used to have just uh, a one-sentence intro, which is not very useful. So it's, it's always nice to see that someone has summarized the article a little more effectively. Uh, also, this, this poster having a nice graphic at the beginning is a good thing. And you can see it's gotten pretty extensive. So there's a history section, instructional design, exams and assessment, MOOC experiences, economics, technology, etc. cetera. Um, so there's, there's lots here. With, a, with an article that has so much information in it, my first thought is usually, can this information be um, organized in a way that makes it easier for someone to understand the topic? So if you were going to, uh, if you were going to do a homework assignment relating to this article, you might, you might skim through it originally and uh, initially, and it, just with an eye to, if I were just coming to this art, this topic um, for the first time, which maybe you are. How, how good a job does it do at, at summarizing everything in a way that helps me understand it? And you might find that you want to add a new paragraph to the lead section or um, you know, maybe expand an acronym. Maybe there's something, maybe there's like a, a bit of technical terminology in there that is explained in the article but is not explained the first time the term comes up. So something like that. But uh, what I wanted to focus on here is this banner at the top. And I'm sure you've seen banners like this if you've uh, if, just elsewhere on Wikipedia. They generally tell you if there's a problem with an article or if there's sort of a major proposal about what to be done with that article. So in this case, it says it has been suggested that MOOCs in Europe be merged into this article. So um, often there will be closely related articles on Wikipedia. In this case, the person thinks that um, that MOOCs in Europe is maybe a little too specific, and there's no reason not to just weave it into maybe a section on Europe. So Peter, right right now in the chat box, Orange Abundances is suggesting that that people on his or her team might might work to address this issue and and uh, contact Orange Abundance directly if that's something that's of interest to you. Excellent. Okay. Um, Orange Abundance, do you think you could also leave a note on our class talk page um, so that if people want to follow up after the class or if people aren't in the class today, that they might see that as well? Let's, uh, I'll, I'll just I'll circle back to that at the end of the class, and um, if you're needing any help figuring out how to do that, we'll make sure that uh, we'll make sure we cover that. So, um, so back to this this box. It's been suggested that MOOCs in Europe be merged into this article. So, if you didn't know what merge meant, you've got a link on on the word merged. So that uh, would be helpful in understanding how people go about merging articles within Wikipedia. Uh, but I think you want to be if, if you explore ideas with this, you'll often find, I mean, look at this huge, huge page just about how to merge articles. Um, there's a lot of information here, and you can easily get overwhelmed. So don't, don't feel that in order to participate in the discussion or express an opinion that you have to be familiar with everything about the history of article merging. Uh, that sort of thing is there if you need it, but it's, there's, there's no requirement that you absorb it all. And uh, it's a good thing to keep in mind 
as you're working on Wikipedia because there's just so much internal documentation once you start to figure out where to look for it. But this next link is a very useful one. So anytime there's a banner like this, there should always be something on the talk page about it. It's, it's not, people don't always do this, but they should. So if you go to an article and put a banner at the top of it saying, oh, I guess I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. All of these banners are just added by, um, by ordinary users of Wikipedia. Of course, it's usually the more experienced users, but it's not like you have to have some special position uh, or there's a special pro process for determining when a banner should go at the top of, of an article. So if you're reading an article and it's really technical and you notice that there are almost no citations uh, in the article, um, you might have a little bit of digging to do to figure out how to add the banner. You would probably want to find another article that, that has a banner about citations at the top and just copy that code. But apart from that, that technical issue of figuring out exactly what the code is, there's nothing stopping you from putting that banner at the top of the article. So in this case, the person put the banner there and it automatically, yeah, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, oops, I'm sorry, I just clicked the wrong link. Um, I wanna go to edit source, go back. So this is going to show you. Yep. This is one of those moments to point out that what you see there at the top of the tabs that you see are, are different from the tabs that a lot of us see. I don't have edit data. I have, I just have edit source and view history. Right. I think it depends on when your account was established. I'm not it sure. It does depend when your account other was established. Too. Yeah. So. Um, so it, it, it depends on when your account was established and also what you've said in your preferences. So it's um, it's it's kind of if if you're not seeing those links, you could bring those links up by going into your preferences and um, choosing to have the what's called the visual editor enabled. I'm gonna <clears throat> Sarah, can you remind me to come back to that in a minute because that's an important topic, but I don't want to. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Um, so, so here I have just highlighted the code that uh, that creates that uh, the banner at the top of the MOOC article. So uh, many templates carry what are known as parameters. So this gets a little bit technical, and um, I think some of th this will make sense to some of you. And if you don't have any background in computer programming or anything like that, it might be a little confusing. So don't worry about it if, uh, if you're not following. Um, but, but this, uh, or hopefully it's of interest and, you know, feel free to ask questions. I'm, I'm, this is one of those areas where I'm not sure exactly what's going to be of interest to people. But um, the template itself is called Merge From. So you may remember earlier in the class, we looked at the user box template uh, and we just copied the name of the template and put it in the, in the search box. So we typed in template uh, and I forget the name of that one. It was a user box something. In this case, it would be merge from. So that would take us to the template itself. But as you can see, there's some, there's between the, the squiggly lines at the beginning and the end that indicate the template, there's a lot more after that. So the vertical bar indicates that you've, you're done entering the name. And then everything after that is a parameter that, um, that determines what goes into it. So in this case, it's the template just sets up that basic structure of um, another article should be merged into this one. And then you need to supply it with the name of that other article that you want merged in. So it's MOOCs in Europe. Uh, and then you need to give a link for where the discussion should go. It, it should happen if um, if people want to have a have a discussion about it. And I think this is a pretty complicated yep. little template, yep. though, for for a beginner. I like true. I wouldn't I'm, like when I look at this, I don't really doesn't really mean anything to me. I could probably figure out which fields I would need to copy and paste into. Um, yep. 
but I don't have any programming background and like I, I like to if there are people who are looking at the code thinking, well, I it's ridiculous, I'm not a programmer, there's no yeah. way I could do that. You really don't ever have to engage with that stuff. You just get a sense for like, oh well, that thing says June and now it's August. So if I just replace that one word and you can do all the trial and error you want in your sandbox, you know, until you get the hang of it. And you can always undo your changes. So I just don't want anyone feeling daunted by yeah. What you were just looking at, because it like, it doesn't really necessarily have to make sense to anyone to at this point. Yep. Thank you for pointing that out, Sarah. It's uh, it's I, I, I yeah, I, I I didn't mean to delve into something that is definitely more technical than we need to be at this point. The main the main point I'm trying to make there is is that this is something that other people will do um, <clears throat> really it's it's just a way of, of suggesting how to uh, how to structure articles and so if you want if you have an opinion about this maybe you think well actually uh, there's been a lot of news coverage of interesting developments in Europe around MOOCs recently and I think it makes sense to have a separate article if that was your take on it, then you, the first thing you'd want to do is click on the Discuss tab. And usually, but not always, this will go to a place where someone has actually gone into a little more detail of why they think uh, the articles should be merged. Sometimes people skip that step. They shouldn't, but sometimes they do. Right? This is all just individual volunteers doing what they do, and people don't always follow the best practices. But in this case, he has given uh, some reason of why he thinks they should be merged, and then actually he came, the same person came back after looking into it a little bit more and says, having looked at the edit histories, I now see that a chunk has been removed from this page to create the new page. So there's a little bit of nuance to this suggestion there, uh, and I'm not going to get into it in more depth right now. But say, you know, suppose that you looked into that and developed uh, some thoughts about whether or not it should be merged or what some of the considerations should be, then you would just click on edit source here. And that takes you into the edit mode for this discussion and you just put your comment at the bottom. Typically people will use, uh, every time you put a colon at the beginning of a line, it indents it a little further. So typically uh, people will indent it one level further than the, the previous comment. But again, that's a technical detail, detail that you don't really have to worry about. If you just put your comment in, that's enough. And if someone else uh, is a little confused by the formatting, they'll probably just tidy it up a little bit. Uh, also, when you make a comment uh, on a talk page, you always want to sign it. So you can click this, uh, this pen in the toolbar, and that will add the code these, the, the four squiggly marks will automatically turn into uh, your name with a link to you, your user page and a timestamp that says when you made the comment. So any, any questions on this little detour we took? Um, let's see, what was it I was going to, oh, and the, so Sarah pointed out that the uh, the edit buttons at the top are not the same on everyone's screen. So I want to just go into the preferences for a minute and show you. So the the main thing here is the uh, the visual editor. So there is a feature on Wikipedia under development that makes it possible to edit a page without dealing with all that code that we were just looking at. Um, but it's it's under development, so it only works on certain features. It um, you can do you can edit text, you can do things with images. But if you want to get into more complex stuff like tables or like this template at the top that we were just looking at, uh, you might not be able to do that stuff with the visual editor. So because it's under development, it's um, it's been made available to new users, and then I think that has been taken away so that it's not automatically available to new users, but you can go in and turn it on in your preferences if you want to. I honestly don't know the exact state of that. There's been a whole lot of discussion about it and decisions that have gone back and forth. Um, but if it is something that you want to use and you're not seeing this edit beta 
button in your toolbar, then you'll want to go into your preferences and turn it on. Uh, and actually, this is another thing where I don't know exactly where to look. It's probably going to be under editing. Okay, so this, I don't know if this is the only thing in your preferences, but if you go into preferences and click editing, the very bottom button has this temporary, temporarily disable visual editor while it is in beta. So um, I guess it's enabled if you don't have that checked and disabled if you check it. Okay, uh, any other questions before that? I might, <clears throat> the last thing I want to cover today is wiki projects. So I'm going to jump into that unless there are some other questions. I'm just catching up on the chat window right now. Uh, EJ was just pointing out uh, a uh, couple uh, uh, article that looks sort of like a funny little stub that might be part of a broader OER article. And I don't think we really should take the class time to talk about it, but it is worth, I think, at some point discussing um, the possibility of people, you know, stepping forward like Orange Abundance just did and saying, hey, why don't we, as a team, work on this OER article? And I mean, like, uh, this is, I think, a good thing to come back to at some point. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the, that's the main thing we're going to get into next week with the, um, so next week we'll be talking about the final project for the class. And um, we'll... We'll get into that. I'm, I'm going to actually uh, hopefully be able to base some of those suggestions off of things that are already happening, which is great. Uh, I, I love that Orange Abundance has suggested taking on our article so early. That's great. So, so the, the next thing I wanted to cover is the concept of a wiki project. So I'm going to just type in WP colon wiki project in the toolbar here. Um, and as I'm doing this, you may, you may have started to notice that um, WP colon is a, is a common beginning uh, to align when you're, when you're looking for information about Wikipedia. So that is a shortcut for the Wikipedia namespace, as you see these, um, these autofill things that have come up, I'll start with Wikipedia. So it's the same thing as if I just typed Wikipedia at the beginning. And, uh, and so this is where you'll find lots of pages that, that document the different things on Wikipedia. So a wiki project is essentially is a, is a set of pages that supports people in working on related content. So if you're interested in, I think we saw earlier, uh, someone said that they were a member of Wiki Project Ice Hockey. So if you're interested in ice hockey and you want to find other people who are interested in working on articles around that, Wiki Project Ice Hockey would be the place to do that. So, and, and usually um, those will have pretty intuitive shortcuts. So you can, like one of, the, one of the easiest ways to find a Wiki Project can just be to guess at the name. So I'll put in Wiki, WP colon, I'm going to just type in ice hockey, and look, it came up as the first result. So there's Wiki Project Ice Hockey. Uh, if you don't find it that way, that's where you would probably want to go back to this, um, the Wiki Project page that I, <clears throat> that I pulled up before. And if you look around here, there is, there we go, directory of Wiki Projects. So this will give you a whole listing um, of categorized wiki, wiki projects and allow you to dig around and find the one that's of most interest to you. Um, it's important to understand that uh, wiki projects can often sort of look like ghost towns. Um, it's, it's not that uncommon for someone to start a wiki project because they're uh, really interested in in being part of one, but then nobody comes to it, or maybe there's a flurry of activity early on, uh, but then it sort of dies down. So the first thing you want to do if you're looking at a new one is get a sense of how active it is. So let's, I'm going to pick something kind of random here. I'm going to go within music and, oh, let's say Richard Wagner. 
So if I'm looking at this and curious how active it is, but the very first indication is going to be what's here on the front page. So I can see there's a lot of stuff on the front page. So that's a good sign that someone has put some work in. There's also, I just uh, skipped right past this list of participants. So there's about this project. So I only see six people listed as participants. My guess would be that that probably indicates a pretty uh, inactive wiki project. But you never know. Sometimes with um, with some topics, it, there might not be a lot of people involved, but those people might be very, very active. So to get a better sense for that, my first click in a wiki project is always on the talk page. And then you'll want to look at the dates. So, well, actually, before you look at the dates, you want to probably scroll through and see how much is here on the front page. Uh, some projects archive better than others, so you might see, you know, years worth of commentary all on one page, or it might be organized into archive boxes in the upper right. In this case, there are three recent topics, and it looks like they're all from within the last month or two. So that to me looks like a fairly active wiki project, and if I were wanting to start an article that related to Richard Wagner and, uh, and wanted some other people to review it, or if I wanted to make some substantial changes to articles that already exist, I would just leave a new comment here. So if you want to join the project, you can. And that typically just means on the, on the main project page, just putting your own name in the list of participants. There's really no formal process for joining a project. It's just, it's just kind of uh, putting your name out there and saying this is something that I'm interested in uh, is, is the way that people usually go about that. Um, but that, that part really is optional. The main thing is just to leave a comment. So you can, you can leave a note and hopefully start a discussion. And then later on, if you decide it's something you want to stick with, then you can go back and add yourself to the participants. Or you can start off by adding yourself to the participants and just watch the commentary. Um, you mean add a note on the talk page or just um, yes. anywhere? Um, so this is the point at which people usually ask if there's an OER wiki project. Yes. So um, I, I'm going to address the first of those comments. First, just so the main two pages to look at are going to be the project page and the talk page. Often there'll be some pages within a wiki project, and we'll, we'll see an example of that in a moment. But the project page is usually kind of more static. It's, it's, it's um, just a collection of information about the project. So the only thing that you're likely going to want to do early on in a wiki, on the project page itself, is add your name to the list of participants. Um, once you're involved in a project, you might start to develop some ideas about how the main page could be organized a little more clearly or something like that, and you might want to work on it. But you probably want to already know some people in the project before you start doing things like that. Uh, but then the, the talk page is where you would want to leave comments or uh, look at what other people are talking about and jump in on their conversation. So, um, so is there a wiki project about OER? This is, uh, this is kind of a work in progress. So, our project, which I showed you before, Communicate OER, which you can get to by this shortcut, WP colon com OER. This is sort of the closest thing there is to a wiki project about OER as of now. And it, it works the same way. Right? If you want to, if you want to join the team, it's actually not on the front page here, which just has information about the project, but there's this tab for team. So if you click on that, you'll see Lots of people have added their names, and all you need to do is um, click on the Edit Source button and add your name at the bottom and put in a little information about why you're interested in OER. And also, the, the talk page here is a good place to bring up ideas about open educational resources. Now, in our, in our project, there's a little bit of, you can use this, pro, this talk page and or you can use the class talk page uh, we would encourage you, especially early on, to use the class talk page. Um, but as we approach the end of the course and you want to continue discussions and things like that, 
um, it might make more sense to move to this. One final point about this is that um, as we wrap up this project, we probably want to um, to formalize this into a more ordinary wiki project and probably combine it with some others. So there is a there's a wiki project open access, which is uh, this is a very closely related concept to open educational resources. Um, oh, let's see. I, okay, so actually this this is so I typed in one address and it actually took me to, this is not the wiki project. This is, so it, as it says at the top, this is a failed proposal, which seems like a, st a strange thing to see on a wiki project page. So as soon as I see that, um, I look above it and I see for other uses, see wiki project open access. So this is actually, um, you know, many different things live in the Wikipedia namespace, proposals, policies, um, and so sometimes the shortcut that you go to does not take you to the thing you're expecting. So it's another click away. So anyway, this is another wiki project that would be related to that, that topic. There's also, uh, there's a wiki project open source software. So there are several that are kind of overlapping. And one of the things that we're talking about is kind of combining all of those into one that might be called just wiki project open. But we'll be we'll discuss that more as the class comes to its conclusion. Anyway, um, one of the homework assignments this week is to find a wiki project that's of interest to you and join it. So uh, communicate OER is probably the obvious choice if you're interested in open educational resources. Uh, and by interested, you know if 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 you're if you're going to uh, choose an OER article to work on as your homework assignment, uh, which we very much encourage you to do, that's, that's the level of interest I'm talking about. This is not, you don't have to be uh, an expert or have a, have a long history in a topic to join a project. Really just being interested in that topic is the only qualification. And Sarah says it's almost better if you are not an expert. So, and that's, that's really true. That's uh, the first wiki projects that I joined, uh, which actually we, we basically all kind of founded together is Wiki Project Oregon, which uh, I pretty, so I was, I was, I'd been living in Oregon for a long time, but I didn't know a whole lot about the history and politics. Um, and wanted, uh, where sorry about that ringing, guys. Um, yeah, and so so a desire to learn about the topic was really the, the main thing that brought me here. And that and that was the same of other people as well. So it's uh, it's really working on Wikipedia can be a great way to dig in and learn more about a, a topic. Hey, Peter, I'm going to jump in and it's say. Your, uh, it's at, yeah. I was just going to say, with our, I mean, we just ran out of time on the one hand. But on the other hand, do you want to real quick uh, show people the new look for the home page, for our class home page, and talk them through that new box so they can, in case they have trouble getting oh, sure. oriented. Yes. We moved some stuff around, as you might have noticed. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So the last time I showed you uh, the, the main navigation box for the article, or for the, for the course, and I ended up changing the look kind of significantly. It was, uh, I don't think it was organized in a way that was very useful. And so I ended up with something that looks pretty different. Um, so hopefully it just makes more sense now than it did. Um, I'm just going to adjust the size a little bit here. OK. So each one of the, <clears throat> each week obviously has its own line. And then there's also this show hide button that allows you to dig into it. So these early ones um, will have links to the archive sessions from the class. Uh, and then the, the link itself goes to the course page for that class session. And then at the bottom, we have the main general pages for the class, so the, the course discussion page, the Teams page, um, the, the, and then again, these, uh, the final project description on the student list. Um, hey, I, think the, 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 I think the important thing is that if you click on the 
if where it says week one, everything you need for week one is there. And if you click where it says week two, everything you need for week two is there. That's where all of the um, archives of each of these sessions will be. And that's also where your homework will be. So if you have any trouble at all getting oriented, just click on whichever week we're in. And if you want to go back and review, just look at a previous week and all the stuff from that week will be right there too. So sorry to add a little extra time for that, but I, I think it's important that we, we all stay oriented. I'm glad you did. I probably should have jumped in with that first thing. And this is, of course, uh, where all the homework is listed as well, which uh, is a pretty important point. <laughs> so um, thank you, everyone, for showing up. And I hope that we will see you in the lab session in two days as well. Um, so as you hopefully recall, uh, the lab sessions are much more interactive. We don't have as much structure for them. So if you're looking at the homework and starting to, to work on it and you have some questions or if you don't know how to get started or something like that, um, the lab session is the best place to bring the, that sort of thing up. So we usually have really interesting discussions there. We never know where they're going to lead. So please join us. And we'll see you there. Thank you guys for coming, and definitely please stop by the lab. It's like pretty fun and fun and casual, and you can ask any question. Peter will answer it. <laughs> any question? <laughs> okay. Uh, see you on Thursday. Bye bye.